what's up everybody we are back and uh today i am here with a special guest you want to go ahead and introduce yourself mike yes mike. my name is mike and i um i'm a co-host of the champions advantage wrestling podcast <clears throat> where can you find that podcast eh? oh just about anywhere you just about anywhere you have podcasts prime oh really oh well, well okay. i gotta go check that out you mean you haven't yet yeah, if you haven't yet, y'all have to go check that out. It's... Okay, well, I have to say, these guys, <clears throat> like a certain big red person, I wouldn't say too much, but yeah. He, he... Now, now, Kane fact of the week. Do you have a random Kane fact that you, that from the past that you liked? Oh, that he has just, just so you know, he has about every record there is to have in. <laughs> The WWE, like the most matches, most wins, most losses, uh, just about just about any record there is to have. And uh, I'm trying most to think characters. of one. Most characters he wants he he's been in 17 Rumble or 19 Rumbles as three different characters. He's done a whole lot of things. He's been in the most Rumbles ever. Still has the most eliminations combined. It's just it's insane how much that man has accomplished. And if you don't know, we're talking about the big red machine, Kane. The devil's favorite man. These guys have a Kane fact of the week every week for you guys. You go check that out. What? We're not here to talk about Kane. We are here to talk about reboots. In this day and age, reboots are everywhere. Uh, are there any reboots that you're looking forward to, that you are actually looking forward to? Oh, yes. Everything coming out this year. I, I mean... I'm a like I said, we spoke a little bit about Dumbo, how it's not your cup of tea, but I really like it. And uh, the Lion King, which is very special to me because it's one of my favorite movies, came out came out on the day I was born, uh, originally. So that's that's cool. And I mean, Aladdin's like the king of all Disney movies, in my opinion. And uh, and that's and that's coming out, and the casting is incredible with that. Well, I'm just I'm just so glad the third trailer did it because the first two trailers I did not like it. I didn't like like them at all. They're playing with us. Well, that's not a good way when you want to sell a movie. Okay. <laughs> no. But I, I think it kind of figured everybody that was gonna go see it anyway. So they're trying to get put together the perfect trailer before they released it. And I, I think they hit the nail on the head. Yeah, because if they didn't come out with this trailer, I don't think I don't think I would have been going to go see it. To be honest with you. Oh, I'm 100% going to see it now. I was about 90% then. Okay. What do you think about uh, Will Smith as Genie? How do you think he'd do? I think they could not have possibly done better. Okay. I mean, as just for general casting, like I can't even think of somebody off the top of my head that might have been better. Uh, I mean, the, he has ginormous shoes to fill. I mean, Robin Williams put on the, in my opinion, the greatest comic ever, put on the performance of a lifetime in the original movie. He, I think he's up to the challenge. Okay. So I heard a lot of people that brought this argument up. They say Will Smith, I mean, uh, Robert Williams, people always have offense to that, but Robert Williams was playing Robert Williams, so why not just have Will Smith play Will Smith, basically? And I think I think we will get some of that. I really I really do think we'll get a lot of a lot of that. But like it's kind of yeah. weird when, when the bar when the bar you have set is Robin Williams, it's hard to attain that. And yeah. uh I think Will Smith will do it. I mean, Will Smith has done everything from family sitcoms to Pursuit of Happiness, which are completely two different ends of the spectrum, and he killed both of them. Yep, he got he's he's got a track record of everything, literally almost everything. He's a superhero, well, well a super villain, I guess you can call him. He, he was Hancock's so superhero too. Oh uh, well, yeah, yeah. So this day and age with reboots, we even have reboots and TV shows going on. Any TV show reboots you're looking forward to? Uh, to particularly, not really. I mean, continuations. Uh, continuations. I mean, I am thrilled that they're making a Breaking Bad movie, if that counts in this situation. But uh, I, not really TV was. I was. I had Roseanne on when it first happened, just because I liked the old show. But the new one kind of did nothing for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's nothing really that great to reboot. I mean, the uh, culture is just so different, like from the eighties and nineties to it is now just on what's acceptable and what's not. So it's really hard to reboot these kind of stuff. 
Yeah, because I know they having a uh, 90210 uh, reboot. I don't know if, you know, it's, I, if it's a reboot or a spinoff. I think it's a reboot. Uh, I'm not sure either. I'm not interested because I, honest to God, I've never watched 90210, not a single episode, not a single minute. And uh, it's not exactly my cup of tea, but maybe I will in the future. I mean, it's only one reboot. Um, well, one TV show reboot I'm kind of excited for just because I want to see how it's done. And oh, that's I all that. Oh, you all that. that. Yeah. Oh, I am going with the Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. But, uh, which, the Twilight Zone is one of my favorite shows of all time and looking forward to that. But all that, I mean, yeah, I mean, to see how it's done, I would love to see the old cast come back. I mean, that's what I grew up on. I'm not exactly sure how old you are, but, uh, I'm t- I'll be 24 at the end of this month. Like all that early 2000s, late 90s was what I remember first watching on Nickelodeon. Yeah, it's just uh, I can't say much. But okay, so it's a couple of things that that are gonna be in place. It's just I don't know yet on if the right how the right is gonna be. Like I don't know they're gonna be too catered to too too catered to kids to where they're like it's not funny. Um, that's what happened when the, in the later seasons, like it started just not getting funny and started getting like cringy. Yeah, yo, that's that's it's it's very cringy. It so, was very cringy. I remember, I remember it, but I mean, I remember the old seasons, like the prime of it with Keenan and I believe Kel Mitchell was on that show and uh, that whole unbelievable cast. I just kind of had something. I mean, none, none of them even really amounted to anything. In the future, except for Keenan, who's been on Saturday Night Live since the dawn of time. Well, he, he also has a couple things coming out too, but that was just one of the ones I personally have been excited for because it's you know childhood. Uh, movie wise, I think only Lion King for, for me. I think only Lion King, like that to the stuff that's been like that we've seen. Because I know we have other stuff that's been announced. I want to see how they would do it, but as for stuff that's that we already seen, I say Lion King. I'm very excited for Lion King. Well, I mean, it's that's really kind of hard to mess up. I think the casting is phenomenal in that as well. I mean, James James Earl Jones, stuff is not broken, don't fix it. And then you have Donald Glover, who I'm a huge fan of. I love this show. On, I love Atlanta. I've been a fan of his music since he kind of hit the scene. And uh, Seth Rogen is uh, Puma. I think it's just a very excellent, excellent cast that can really pull it off. I'm honestly surprised they didn't do Seth Rogen and James Franco as the morning Pumba. <laughs> oh, I got no wish because they're like they would kill it. Yeah. Everything they've done together was hilarious. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I, honestly, um, there are stuff that I don't like though in reboots because just because you make a reboot, I mean that you know that you're gonna like it. Oh, absolutely and, not. And wait, most most. Studios, what they do is they reboot something and they try to get eyes from the older audience, but then they make it for the younger audience, which I never understood why they do that. Well, I mean, would you count the Dark Knight trilogy as a reboot or a continuation? Uh, <laughs> technically, since, since it's a whole new thing, I'll count it as a reboot, technically. Yeah, I mean, because if, if, if that's probably should be the model. I mean, they produced three good, two excellent movies out of that trilogy, and all the old Batman fans saw it, and it, it brought in a whole new generation of uh, people even to check out the old ones. Because ever since then, I've since the Dark Knight came out, I saw all the original Batman's, and uh, I still think Michael Keaton might be a little better than Christian Bale, but that's my opinion. But uh, Reboots, they, it it plays with expectations. I know we often talk about wrestling and not how it does lives up to expectations. Expectations are you know a big part of it. If you go in with the highest expectations, it's not going to be good. Like I saw Star is Born without the highest expectations. That movie blew me out of the water. Mm. I'm just saying, but, like some reboots do it good. Though. I'm saying some reboots do it good. Some reboots don't. Like for me, I think. I think Fuller House did good, like as a reboot, because they could stand on its own. You don't really have to yeah, watch Fuller House. It was and it was different than the original Full House. I mean, it was a show we all loved and seen just about every episode. I don't even think I'm going on a limb to saying people haven't. I mean, it was on Nickelodeon and ABC Family for years syndication. 
I mean, it's mm-hmm. a little bit before it's a little bit before my time live, but that doesn't count because I've seen just about every episode, and they did it well. I did not catch the last season, but I think it was enough of a different show that they 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 did it well with the same characters. It was modern. It was more modern, which some people some reboots lack to have. Yeah, but it, like for that, it's more modern and it still caters to it's caters to new people. But it still caters to old fans of Full House. Like it's basically for the oh, yeah, older you know, fans of Full House. Yes. We show up from time to time, but yeah. it's a completely it's it's a show independent of that fact as well. Yes, like you don't have to watch Full House to watch Fuller House. No, it just it'll be nice. It'll be nice. It helps out, but like it, it stands on its own. Yes. I don't know any other show that can do that. Like personally, I don't know any show that that has done that because usually they'll just do it in a spinoff and they have characters come back from a spinoff. But a, a full reboot in this day and age, I know uh, the Rugrats are trying to do a reboot, but oh, I don't God. know how you can. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't like that idea. I don't know how you can. I mean, I I, that's not that's one show. You, I don't think it can even touch. Yeah, because uh. They did do a all grown up. That was a spinoff, but yeah, that I remember was, that. a few years after. So that kind of that kind of worked out. But uh, I don't you know. Could... Actually, I got some quick. I'm sorry to cut you off. I got some quick because uh, I seen this the other day, and they they trying to do a spinoff of SpongeBob. Won't happen. That just that oh, can't happen. No, no, that no that that's official. It's official. Oh no, I'm not saying I'm just saying it won't be successful. I mean SpongeBob is SpongeBob. I mean I'll, I will continue. That's my generation of Nickelodeon. I mean I remember, I remember watching the first episode premiere. I was about 5 or 6 years old and that was that was my that was my generation show forever. I don't think they can recreate that magic because that show just had something. I I think I might be a little biased for recency, but I think it's the greatest cartoon ever made. Especially the Nickelodeon era. Nickelodeon's had some excellent cartoons. SpongeBob had longevity. It had a whole just celebrated uh, hilarity and characters that you love. And I don't, do not think you can re- recreate that magic. I think the the, the um not the writer the director of um, Nickelodeon said that he didn't he he loves SpongeBob. But sometimes he gets tired of SpongeBob. Sometimes he wants other characters to shine. That's why he, he wanted to start them having a, a re a Well, that's spin-off. not actually – I did not see the spinoff you're talking about. So, But that's actually not a bad idea because they, all those episodes, understandably so, were very SpongeBob-centric. But yeah. uh, there's a whole universe they can kind of play with there. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, that, he said he wants to start like a like how the Marvel Cinematic Universe is, but with SpongeBob, which is – I don't know how we feel about that. I but. mean – I wouldn't. I wouldn't complain if I got an old man Jenkins origin story. Oh no! Actually, uh, 2018, we got a full episode of the dude that says my leg. Are you kidding me, Fred? Yeah, we got a full episode of Fred uh, and stuff that happens to his leg. Oh God! Like, like literally, like every every time you hear him say my leg in the show, they literally uh, did an uh, extra scene to see what happened to him. That caused him. That's to actually. Him. It's actually hilarious. I'll have to check that, that out. It's hilarious until like maybe the, the middle or the end of the episode where he just starts saying my leg, my leg, my leg, my leg, my leg. <laughs> that's that's un- that's, un- that's unbelievable, actually. Like SpongeBob trying to help him, but SpongeBob makes it worse, actually. And he's like, you know what? I don't care. My leg is hurt all the time. Might as well. So yeah, that guy, that, that guy has to have more metal pieces in his leg than anybody I've ever met in my life. I'm surprised if he don't got a prosthetic leg by now. Something. That'd be hilarious if they get one of somebody steals it and he starts doing my leg. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you can, I don't know how you can have a prosthetic fish leg, so maybe. I mean, they fish don't have legs to win, so I mean, I, I, I think well, I can figure they can figure a way out. Yeah. I mean, it's it is a lot of stuff happening though. Um. Oh, I mean, there's so much content in the world right now. That they're gonna at least try everything once, I think. I mean, that show, shows that see shows that I like. Some some of them don't get reboots, and some of them do. Like, uh, I'm a big fan of D- Danny Phantom. Okay, D- 
Danny Phantom hasn't gotten anything. You said what? That was a very good show. That was I was about nine, I believe, when that launched, and uh, I was I always would watch it. I was never like a big fan. I was more of a fan of Chalk Zone, to be honest with you. Uh, and uh, but I watched Danny Phantom all the time, and that was kind of like the I believe it's the Avatar generation of Nickelodeon. And yeah. uh, and uh, did you say they are doing, or that's one you would like to see? No, that's when I would like. I mean, not, I just want to see something done because they haven't did anything. Like they just ended the show and that was it. That's upsetting. Now all these people like like Jimmy Neutron. He got a spinoff and he got three movies. You know, yeah, well, he got four movies. He had the movie and then the show and then three spinoffs with the Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah, so I mean, one uh, with Sheen. Sheen had his own series. And, oh yeah, Planet Sheen, which was dumb, but yeah, they tried. So that's what I say. Like I want to see something else, but sometimes everything don't work, so I can understand why they don't do it. But uh, I, like sometimes I, I just like something for some of the shows I like. I mean, would you said you you said you like Avatar a few days ago? Would you like to see something done with that, especially with the rise of anime? I mean, they did they did a, a spin off of it, but I didn't like it, and they're doing another spin off of it. So hopefully, this one is better. They did what a, was the, the Legend of Core. Oh, okay, okay, not familiar, yeah. but uh, yeah. that's just I think that one, that one has the most untapped potential for uh, for uh, remakes because everybody seems to be in the anime right now. I'm not, that's about as far as in the anime I went. Yeah, uh, I think that that didn't have a chance to, to last. That and Digimon is like the farthest I went. And they make Digimon every other year, but I just can't keep up now. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, too much I went with the original in the movie, and that was it. Yeah, like I said, that was just a tad before my time. So I never really got into it. But uh, I, I understand and respect and respect its uh, impact on the world. I mean, that's, I mean, I would watch it, but that's as far as in the anime I would go. Yeah. I didn't even watch Pokemon or uh, uh, what's some other shows? What's what's the show with the cards? Is it Bait? No, it's not Beyblade. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so if you had to pick a show to the reboot, which show would you pick? Like any show ever? Any show ever? Yeah, I would. Love, I mean, the Twilight Zone is getting a reboot. That that's really up there for me. Because I feel like how modern this world has gotten, that they can do some insane stuff visually and uh, story-wise, but that's already getting a reboot. Did you get all that? I didn't hear the last part. Oh, I said uh, Futurama. I mean, it's been rebooted. It's been rebooted twice, and uh, they have a chance to do something big with it this time. So I would choose. I would like a proper last, maybe two or three season run of Futurama. Okay. Uh, I don't. Me personally, I don't know because, like, when you reboot a show, you try to put the same magic into that first show. Like, for uh, well, it's not a reboot, but spinoffs usually hurt that. Reboots is usually for one audience, but then they cater to a different audience, which I never understand. So I'm saying I don't know what show can perfectly do that for me. But I'm gonna go ahead and on a limb and say South Park. You know? Oh, I mean, I just I South Park is an extremely underrated television show. Like as its as its impact when it first when it first hit, but I mean they're still going. I, I don't think you can. I don't even know what you would do with a reboot. I mean they're still going and they're going strong. They're the most topical show on television. They're more topical than the news when during during the end season. Yeah, and uh, sometimes yeah. I mean I want South Park around as long as possible because I mean they've produced. They produced at least two or three good episodes every season for twenty three years now, and that's just something that you don't that you don't see all the time. And I mean, in the early years, especially, it was it was every episode was good. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I know, my brain kind of fries. So I say South Park. I really would. I, well, I probably would want a Keenan the Kill movie or something like that. Something to. I would love to see the mid thirties Keenan and Kel. I don't, I don't. I mean, if it was a show, I probably wouldn't like it. So that's why I say a movie because 
it's just like an hour and a half, two hours or whatever. So if it's not good, then they can, you know, they can save themselves by not doing it every week or have it out. Yeah, they can, they can just do it once. And if it works, yes. it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yes. I mean, I don't know. I got a lot of stuff I want to think of, but sometimes it's hard when you try to think all over the map. Like, I thought I thought last year that they were going to have a Family Matters reboot, but they didn't. They just dropped it. I mean, I, I, I never, I didn't hear that, but you got to see what shows would hold up to I me. Mean, would, would, I mean, Seinfeld, in my opinion, is the greatest sitcom of all time. Uh, would that hold up today? Would that be able to be rebooted? It's, it's, it's such a different world culturally, like I said earlier, on what's acceptable and what's not acceptable that you don't know what could be brought back and oh. if there's limitations, bring it back at all. Oh, uh, Seinfeld started an outrage, honestly. Uh, I don't know if you – it's this channel called The Fine Bros, and they did they, – they have this thing on the channel called Do, Does It Hold Up? And they show different episodes of Seinfeld to teens and uh, adults that the audience was generated to. You know what? I that saw is. this video. Oh, okay. I okay, saw this know. video. And, I mean, I mean, if you look – search hard enough, there's going to be things in every show that doesn't hold up in 2019, even shows that are more recent, such as How I Met Your Mother in the Office – but I mean, I think as a whole, Seinfeld would hold up. But that's just my opinion. Like, the, but that's the thing you have to think about now that you would have to think about, you know, ten years ago. So it's just it, we're in a day of immediate outrage and boycotts, and people like to tiptoe around even dealing with that. And so some of these shows might, if they do get a reboot, be extremely limited and be not the same show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, like everybody. A lot of people have different sense of, senses of humor. So what works for one person doesn't work for the other. Now, I'm surprised uh and Family Guy everybody, everybody uh, now. I'm surprised everybody uh South Park and Family Guy had to get kicked off the air because of you know certain people how their See, humor like, works. South Park, they're pretty much untouchable because they're equal they're equal opportunity assholes. I mean they uh they uh they make fun of everybody. So they're mm-hmm. not this this kind of thing gets kind of pushed down usually into the political spectrum, which we're, I'm not even touching. But when you make fun of everybody, there's not one group that can be mad at you, and I think that's the way to go. Yeah, I still can't believe they sign field though. I don't. I mean, me personally, I I can understand that it's coming, and it was years ago. So that's why I was just like, you know, it's it it's years ago, so we can't just think about it today because it was made years ago. Some people do, but, you know, I guess that's how they look at it when they watch shows or certain things. Yeah, I mean, I just I just have it hard holding that kind of stuff up because what's, what's socially acceptable now was not socially acceptable then and, and vice versa. And uh, it's just hard to judge, but those shows got to step into this world and sometimes it's better if they left, they go left undone. I mean, even, even Saturday Night Live, Old episodes of that is even like, if you want to talk technical, some episodes are like rough. Oh yeah, I mean, they had some of the greatest comedians of all time come through there, and like with real raunchy ass humor. So, I just it's just comedy evolves, and you just got to know what to do and what not to do, and be aware of your surroundings is pretty much the moral of that story. I got, I got, I got more questions, but this one I want you to. I want you to think about. I want you to name a movie that you think should have a TV show from the movie. That oh, you like so much. Okay, let me think about that for a second. Uh, oh, and that really services two different genes in me. Uh, hmm. I mean, vice versa. I know I'd lo- I'd love to see a Sopranos movie. What movie would I love to see turned into a TV show? Uh, maybe like a ten-part Harry Potter Netflix series. I don't know. Oh, you went with the Harry Potter. I mean, is that technically cheating? Because Harry Harry Potter already has like eleven thousand parts. So well, I mean, maybe, season, expanded, maybe an expanded, maybe an expanded universe movie. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean. Is that's hard to think? I mean, movies and TV serve two different parts of me, and 
but yeah, that's that's gonna be my thing. A, a ten a ten part Harry Potter series. I think that's okay. the best way to do it. Okay. And I mean, I'm sure I, Game of Thrones will get a movie eventually. So I'm sure it probably will get a movie like after this season. <laughs> With probably fan? everybody that's in the show. Are you a fan? Do you watch the show? No, I don't. But I hear a lot about it. See, I was one of the people that got into it too late. So, like, they on like what season eight? They're on season seven. Season seven. They on season seven, and I'm still. I haven't even. I watched like two episodes, and they were all over the place. And I didn't know what was going on, so I just stopped. Put on a pot of coffee and get started, because it's incredible. <laughs> I, I know it's incredible. I was like, oh, I, I can't well, even. Like, I, in your defense, you really have to power through the first season to get used to places and names. Mm. But when you do that, you're in, and then you won't stop watching until until it's over. Okay, I had to think about it because it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Is each episode like an hour? Yeah, fifty six minutes. Yeah, somewhere in there, like one, like one standard HBO hour episode. Okay. I mean, uh, for me, I don't know. It's it's a it's a movie that I really liked, but it already has a TV show, so I can't pick that. I can pick a better version of the TV show, I guess. But hey, just say it. It's not illegal. Oh, uh, Weird Science. It's a show called Weird Science. Oh my God, eh, is that really a show connected with the movie? I, yes, it I'm, is. I loved I loved that movie. I've never seen the show, but if we're thinking of the same weird science movie, it's it's a fabulous movie. It's now I don't know how the show went five seasons. I don't know how it went that far because I was on the first seasons. season. Yes, it did. Jesus, don't know how. I'm on the first season. I'm like I'm liking it, but I don't think it's five seasons first. I put it to you like now, that. Are we are we talking like? Oh, I know. Can I change my answer? Sure. The Warriors. I would love oh. to see the Warriors. I would love to see the Warriors as a television show. Okay. I mean, maybe an episode on each gang, or an episode like they're doing, or as as they hit each gang in different parts of the city, be a different episode. If you're familiar with the movie, that sounds like a Netflix uh, thing right there. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean Netflix brings a whole new world into this because you get these ten part series that are incredible. I think Netflix like to take chances. I mean, yeah, a lot look of, at Stranger uh, Things. That was a chance, and that paid out. Like a lot of networks don't like to take chances on certain things, so Netflix pick them right up. Some are successes, some are not, but you know they can't all be hits. Hey, but they own it though. It's, it's, they're not losing too much on it. Yeah, I still i I can't go back. I got to go back to this thing because I I can't believe that uh, Weird Science got five five seasons. And it's literally the same thing every episode. It's like it's like a, <laughs> <laughs> it's like they have a problem, so they need help. They ask the girl. The girl gives them the wrong thing, and they end up learning the lesson. It's like same thing every episode. With the I movie, mean, hey, works. the movie was 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 cool. With me, it was cool. Probably today, it probably won't fly, but you know. Oh, absolutely not. But. The movie, the, the movie's hilarious. They they have two of the all time greatest comedy quotes in that movie of all time. Uh, what are two unpopular dicks like you having a party? And uh, and I'll have a nice greasy pork sandwich served in a dirty ashtray. And uh, the first, line, the first line sounds like an RBJ RDJ line. I think. It was okay. And but uh, that's, I didn't even know the show lasted that long. I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, it was like from ninety. 90- 92 to 95 or something like that. Is that on any of the streaming services? It's on Amazon. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. But, yeah. See, I, I am like a huge fan of John Hughes movies. He did like a lot of 80s movies. He he does the uh the the coming of age or the teen genre so well. So I mean did he handle the Brad Pack stuff? Yes. All of it. So, I mean, he had a good string there. So, I mean, he's a good person to be a fan of. Yeah, he, he did uh, He did the Home Alone movies. He did the Vacation movies. He did uh, a lot of other series. But, yeah, for the main part, it was the Brat Pack was his, uh, his, his click, I, mean, I guess you call it. I mean, the shining star of all that is probably the Breakfast Club, correct? Yeah, Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. Uh, yeah, Uncle Buck. I like Uncle Buck, too. 
Oh, you mean I like him. John Candy's a legend. Yes. I was going to do a John Candy tribute episode, but, you know, I, I could do that later. I like, I like a milestone episode. John Candy's absolutely incredible. Yeah. I mean, Man, may he rest in peace, but he was great in just about everything he did. So I, don't, I don't know how you are, but I like to collect. <laughs> And I have a couple uh, collections in. Like, my biggest collection I have is, like, a John Hughes collection. And then, like, second is maybe Eddie Murphy. But John Hughes is, like, up there for me. You said the bit Lebowski's movie that you want to see done again. I said I would like to see it, if that could be done again. I mean, I, I'm a fan of all of John Cohen's movies. And the big Lebowski is my, is my favorite movie of all time. And uh, I would like to see that tried again. And I don't even remember this conversation started, but... uh. You talk about John Hughes, and I mean, I, the Cohens did so many interesting things that uh, they can. I think they can move into this era and try something new. I just like people that do stuff new, like new stuff, like John, Jordan Peele. He did something new that nobody's done. Yeah, Get Out. Get Out was different than anything that's ever come out. Like since it was the most different, in my opinion, it was the most different and independent horror movie since Psycho. And uh, and he's gonna continue doing that, which I'm very excited to see us. So, uh, but you're right though. Anything that's different really tickles my fancy, and it doesn't. It can be like weird and cheesy, different. It's just as long as it's, like breaks out from the norm. I'm usually a fan of it. I'm a fan, of, or at least I respect the attempt. Yeah, because like a lot of movies, aside from superhero movies, a lot of movies that come out are just like basically either reboots or the same or boring or bland. So, yeah, a lot of cookie cutter. People that have new ideas, I'm I'm happy for. And not just new ideas, like people will say it's a new idea and have like a movie from like the fifties that nobody heard of and they'll take it and do it. Like uh even even uh Lion King. Lion King was actually uh uh from another movie, if you didn't know. I mean Lion King is just Hamlet played out in the Sahara. But uh no, the Lion King is literally, it's literally another movie. Like the same, it's another movie called uh, Ko- Kovu or something like that. Oh, I didn't know that, but I mean, it's just it really is. Have you ever read Shakespeare's Hamlet? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a. I guess that movie is too, but mine is just a remake of that, and uh, and it, it's so it's it just goes so far beyond even I mean what William Shakespeare had in mind, but. Uh, and I appreciated that because it's and but it was so good. I mean, it it takes a lot of things to get something that perfect out of out of a movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everything has to go well. It's see, everything can't go well all the time. So when when everything does go well, it makes everybody happy. Some people have haters, but for the most part, everybody's happy. Yeah. I'm not even famous, and I have haters. <laughs> well, I know one of them, so. <laughs> that person <laughs> <should be named. laughs> uh, oh man uh, <laughs> I might just end it there because I, I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> so, yeah I'm let's gonna... move on to the next topic yeah uh, anyways people uh, <clears throat> I gotta I can't have this conversation where I talk about a little bit of wrestling because that's what we do so I'm gonna talk about the old, not the not the old old days, but I just want to uh, know if you have any people in mind for this this Hulk Hogan movie that's coming out soon. I mean, as in characters or as in like actors? They're actors. Who do you like? Other like I only think the Big Show is the only person I think is capable of playing Andre the Giant. I'm sure he's gonna be in the movie. I mean, I don't know if you're a basketball fan, but Boban Marinovic could play Andre the Giant, but I don't think that's going to happen. And uh, you know, I think I think Big Show kind of has to play Andre the Giant. I mean, who do you get for Bundy? Who do you get for Piper? I mean, it's, it's a tough movie to put together. I don't think you. I don't think you do every single moment. So, like, I think you need like a Nash in the Hall. I think you need a Vince. Obviously, you might need a Brutus Beefcake because he was following him throughout his whole career. Obviously, I mean. Uh, I mean, Brutus Beefcake probably needs the money. He can just he can he can just play Brutus Beefcake. Have you seen him lately? He looked like 
Yeah, he looked like dude. He looked old, 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 old. Yeah, no, he looks terrible. I, I'll, I'll, I'll say he looks awful. Uh, let's see who else will, will we need? Macho Man, obviously. Yeah, they need a Randy. Need Randy. I feel like that's the easiest part to the carry the the cast though. I mean, I feel like it's easier to cast than Hogan. I mean, I there, mean there's a million people that look like Randy Savage. Yeah, but what they got. Chris Hemsworth as Hogan. I don't. I don't like that. I mean, who would you put? I mean, that's that's as, that's as good as a that's as good as a casting as I could think of. I don't know who I would put, but not. He just don't. I can't imagine him in in a mustache and the 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 bald cap with the uh hair coming down. I don't. Maybe maybe I have to see it to believe it. One of them. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll spare no expense of making him look like Hogan, but he's just the Hulk Hogan was just so gigantic. That I don't even know if you could uh, possibly cast somebody right, but it depends also what they're focusing on. Are they going to show him like growing up? Or are they going to show him like getting into the scene and ended at WrestleMania one? I don't know if you saw Fighting with My Family, but I really think that should be the template for it. Fighting with My Family was excellent. I have not seen that yet. I ain't seen it. I have not seen it yet. But it was, it was excellent. I think it, it was a it, it was a big jump for WWE Studios. And I think every every single wrestling biopic made should be that should be the template. Yeah. Uh, I think I, wh- whoever whatever happens in this movie, I think they should all take it seriously. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of Hogan, I will oh, I will still watch it to be interested I'm not, in. I'm not either. I mean, Hulk Hogan has his place, but it's just nowhere. I mean, he's a pretty off. Terry Bollea is a pretty awful person, but Hulk Hogan's legendary. If that makes any sense. See, when now when they do it, they gotta show everything. They can't just cookie cutter and, and not show no, this part. I mean, it, gotta... depends, it depends where they're gonna cut it off. I mean, I really don't think they're gonna have the sex trial in there. I really no, don't. Not, not not that I mean like so Hogan like saying like you know backstage uh, <laughs> Cause if they if they need to show the backstage politics. They need to. Yeah, I mean, it but it depends also who they want to who they want to sat, uh, satisfy. I mean, do they want to do they want to satisfy the audience of Hulk Hogan uh like rest, wrestle rock and wrestling uh connection when they were people when they were kids or do they want to wrestling fans? I mean, I think I think a little bit of both is the way they need to go, but I mean, mm-hmm. he is the biggest politicker in the history of wrestling. And yeah. I think if you want to make it true to wrestling, if that's what you want to do, you have to show him that. You have to show him doing that. Yeah, he's gonna be the he's gonna be the the biggest face and heel of his own movie. I see that. <laughs> that's 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 true. That's very true. I I, I looked at clips earlier, and I seen uh since they Hogan has one, they said that other wrestlers that they want to have a biopic, and for and for some reason, number one was Kurt Angle. Now. I, I love that. Kurt Angle. documentary. I mean, his story is wild. I mean, he, was, he was taking sixty-five Viking in a day, yeah, and not dying. It's, it was incredible. Come back, hey, Kurt Angle is a superhero. Uh, but uh, I mean, he was my first ever wrestler. I mean, he, I was I was from Pennsylvania. He was from Pennsylvania, and I thought he thought that was awesome. And uh, I kind of latched on to him early. But he's just, and then I realized, I mean, broke his neck, won a gold medal, got addicted to everything. And still here wrestling in 2019. It's a pretty goddamn good story. Now, and we want to, because Kurt Angle has the, like a typical movie, like story for a movie, like a comeback story. Everybody likes to see a comeback story. I'm surprised we're not getting a Jeff Hardy movie because he has been through some stuff. Like, yeah, I feel like I feel like he's more of a wrestler's wrestler. You know what I'm saying? He's uh, more of a wrestling fans wrestler, not a casual fans wrestler. If that makes any sense, I just don't think Jeff Hardy. I don't think Jeff Hardy garners that much outside attention. That uh, I, that I would, say he does. I say he does. I mean, just that's a comeback story. If the, both the Hardys, did you watch the uh, documentary on the network about them? Yes, I did. Holy hell, they've been through it all. Yeah, I didn't know Matt Hardy was as bad as he was. Yeah, he was actually worse than Jeff. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. He, they both he, all his friends, all his friends were thought he was going to die. Yeah, I mean, I I used to watch their YouTube channel back in the day. 
where you could tell he was just all aced out on things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure they all had their, their certain things, but like theirs, whatever they was taking was either strong or something. It was like tough. Yeah, painkillers are crazy, man. Those they things. Had, um, they had China on the list. I don't know if that would ever happen, but uh, was on that list. Never happen, but don't think she was around long enough to uh, do it. Uh, they had um, The Rock on the list. I mean, I think that'll happen one day. I mean, he, I mean, that'll happen one day. I mean, he's he started off. He started off with seven dollars in his pocket, and within two years, was WWF champion. And twenty years later, he's the biggest star in the world. I mean, that's a that's a story if everybody wants to hear it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure The Rock's going to want to produce his own movie, right? Yeah, I mean, if he like I said, fighting with my family was great. If he does it like he did that, it'll be good. And then uh, somebody else on the list, I can't. Oh, Vince, it was Vince. Man. That that is one I want to see. <laughs> that is one I that, really want to see. That is uh, who I don't know who plays Vince though. Like I don't I don't know anybody that can look like I heard somebody say Michael Keaton, but Michael uh, Keaton's my choice or Matthew McConaughey would be my choice. Matthew McConaughey, okay. Because uh, I know they want to have a younger Vince, so they might just have a young person and then just like put makeup on them to make them look older. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's one I would love to see. I mean, there's a lot of it's a lot of places you can go with these biopics if they are to be made or if they thinking about them. No, but like I said, I I think they will think about them now going into the future, and because fighting with my family was so good that they have a template now. Maybe because uh, you know, some people that I see review it are not wrestling fans, so some of them. Uh, kind of, I wouldn't say there were lots of they like needed help with certain things that were not even wrestling related. Yeah, I mean, and then you have the wrestling fans being really nitpicky. But I mean, and if you, there was a lot of inaccuracies if you want to be nitpicky. But if you if you don't want to be a douche watching this thing, you're really gonna enjoy it. I did hear one one story because I didn't see the movie. They said one story. Paige is watching. Um, she's watching TV of The Rock and like. I guess the '90s, but she had to spin it out. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was actually a, it was a double knockout. Uh, her her uh, brother had the spinner belt, and she had the Divas Championship that she won. <laughs> oh, that's like the only thing I'd be like. See, I would probably yeah. want to be more accurate, but that's just me. So other people probably. Like, I you know they wanted the they, that was uh, targeted towards the non wrestling fans, so it, it didn't really bother me that much. But there was a lot of inaccuracies. I mean, the one episode, the one where she just sees the Rock at SmackDown in like 2010, and uh, <laughs> I'm like, that just did not happen. Hey, I, don't even, and, <laughs> I don't think he was backstage or nothing. The only thing I remember the Rock doing in 2010 was uh, he did like a, a satellite video. That's all I remember. Satellite video and probably the Tooth Fairy. I don't. I don't know when when that was when that was coming out. Oh man, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can talk about, but I'm gonna save some of it for later, and I'm gonna end it because we we've been here for quite a while, a little bit, a little a little while. Yeah, probably uh, almost an hour now. We probably went 12 minutes before I caught up the first time, and we're approaching 40 now. Uh, so I am going to end it there. I can have you on later. Talk about anything. Maybe next time we'll talk about um, TGIF or something in that nature. You got it. As for now, I want everybody to say bye to Mike. You can find bye, him. Everybody. You can find him on his podcast, Champions Advantage. Champions Advantage. These end, ends always get me. A speech. Uh, hey, me too, man. You just talk for so long and then you're just worn out. So, you got a sign off, right? Or do y'all not have a sign off? Honestly, I, I forget these things. Uh, as for as for the uh, as for the show, or as just the app, the show. Do do I have a sign off? Yeah, you don't. You don't. You know, put some flair into it. I usually that's usually my co-host job, and I throw something at the end, but. Absolutely follow us, follow me, and y'all have a wonderful night. That okay. I have a sign off since I am prime.
prime time. I say prime time is all the time. And I I'm gonna start there. calling it damn. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> we'll work on it. Oh, yeah. But, all right, guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to like. Well, I can't say like comment, share. I'm used to YouTube. Make sure you do all that stuff, but also follow me, follow Mike, follow Turnbuckle Topics, follow everybody in the family. And uh, prime time is all the time. To the end of the road.